forget his name, but he had three heads. Oh, King Ghidorah. He was standing. Yeah, he was standing very sinisterly on this mountain in a far. Yes, yes. And then very close to the camera, you could see the cross of Jesus Christ. And right. so there's this this uh, view of, you know, the dragon and the cross. And so mm-hmm. it's all around us. And one thing that I've noticed, Derek, is I've been teaching this in my congregation and people are coming to me and they're saying, you know, Tyler, I'm seeing this imagery everywhere, literally everywhere. I mean, once you're, once you're awakened to um, this ancient context of scripture, then you're, you're just, you know, you're bombarded. It's just all around you. Um, you just can't get away from it. And so it really makes you wonder, um, you know, how much knowledge a lot of these uh, movie writers and filmmakers have. And apparently they have tremendous knowledge. Um, and a lot of it, I think, is intentional. I think, you know, there's a lot placed in these movies um, that are, you know, kind of foreshadowing certain events or um, it's just kind of a way of of bragging about their worldview that that the Christians that claim to have the light are totally ignorant of, you know, so. It's just amazing to see all these things come to fruition in in the realm of Hollywood today. It's it's the greatest uh, rebranding campaign, marketing campaign in all of history. The Titans, the original and rightful rulers of Earth, is how they're described in the. Uh, uh, I think Godzilla, King of Monsters, was the previous film, and uh, Godzilla versus Kong again, the Hollow Earth and the whole. Right. Uh, uh, s- setting there. I know we've only scratched the surface uh, of this, and uh, I was fascinated by uh, your your. Uh, exposition on Psalm 91, which is something Sharon spotted a couple of years ago. She did a wonderful presentation on that for uh, last year's Defender Conference, um, realizing that it's not just a prayer for warriors, but it's actually spiritual warfare and, and names spiritual entities, supernatural entities by name that have been sort of translated out of our English Bibles. But I want to I want to get to one final question here to keep this to a, a manageable uh, length, because we could go on, I'm sure, for several hours digging into uh, the, the subject of <laughs> your could. book, uh, because, yeah, my head's been in that research for the last five years now. Um, how is your congregation as a pastor of a church? How is your congregation responding when you bring these subjects, topics into church on Sunday morning? Well, I have to be honest with you. It was, um, it was, a, it was an uphill battle at first, for sure. Um, um, I'd only been in this congregation for about a year when I started teaching a lot of this material. And so I wasn't, you know, tenured, I wasn't well established here. And so that was, uh, one thing I had against me, but, um, I had some, some hesitant, I guess some hesitant, uh, folks, you know, to, to jump on board at first. I didn't have anyone leave the church over it by any means, but, Um, The more I taught this material, which, by the way, I taught the material in my book before I put it in uh, uh, print form. So um, my congregation has went through most of this material. Um, And so I had some, you know, some pushback, but not a lot of pushback. Um, They were just thinking, well, who is this preacher we hired? You know, where did he he come from? (laughs) What in the world is he thinking? Um, but now if you were to ask most of my congregation, they would, uh, say that, you know, a lot of this material was foreign to us, but, um, it's backed by the Bible. And, um, I had one young man, um, that I taught the material to at least a lot of the material to, um, of my congregation that, um, I did not realize, um, you know, some of the things he was going through, um, at the moment, but, um, he later told me that, um, this material saved him from, um, from suicide. Oh my. And so, yeah. And so it, it was that important to him, um, to see the, the full picture of scripture, um, and, and to, to realize that the world that he lived in was not, um, so foreign to what the Bible stated, but that it was in line with the Bible and we are in a war. And so, um, very early on, I had that, um, that happen. And he told me, he said, you know, he said, what you taught me, it, it saved me from committing suicide. And so that was very humbling, very sobering. Um, and so, you know, I, we're, we're a congregation here on the Gulf Coast that, that we have a lot of vacationers um, come through. Before COVID hit, um, in the summertime, we would have anywhere from five to 700 folks on Sunday morning. And um, I would say um, at least half or almost three quarters of those 
um, are vacationers. And so I have a unique opportunity that God has given me to reach a lot of different people every single week. Um, now, since COVID, um, we're, we're running around 300, 400. I think this summer we're, we're going to hit probably five, um, 550. But um, I have a display set up, and it's, it's on my mind. Trust me, it's on my mind to get this information out to each and every person that comes through uh, our congregation this summer because I, I want them to know of the things that are in this book, because I believe that um, men and women of faith are not fighting the Christian fight because they don't believe. I'm not saying they don't believe in God. They certainly believe in God, but they don't, they don't believe in the fight. They don't see the fight uh, for what it is. They don't understand the, the background to the fight. And so I'm of the opinion, Derek, that once Christians are awakened to the great deception once they are awakened to the the real battle that we are in, then they will pick up their swords and they're they're going to start fighting and they're going to be on fire for God. And so it's it's uh, I've taken a road less traveled. Let's just say that you don't have a lot of pastors or preachers who are um, out front talking about this stuff. But I believe that's uh, the, one of the missions that God has given me uh, to use my influence and my platform to help spread the, you know, the message of the gospel. And so I hope that um, I continue to have that opportunity here at Gulf Shores. And, you know, I pray that my congregation will use this material um, to help spread the gospel all over the world. So, well, I've, I've heard similar things as well. And I, t- I take no credit for it because I'm slow to uh, this fight. Uh, you know, Dr. Michael Heiser's done just incredible work in, in getting this information out to the body of Christ and making so much of his research freely available. But uh, all we're doing is trying to recover what the early church knew. We've kind of lost it for about the last 1600 years and uh, bringing exactly. us back, back into the, uh, the body of Christ. So uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama, y- y'all are very close to uh, Pensacola, correct? We are. Yeah. Pensacola's about 50 minutes away. We go there quite a bit, my wife and I, and uh, we like to, Uh, go eat, eat at some restaurants over there. And so we, uh, yeah, we do go there pretty often. So we're right here um, on the Gulf coast. We're in between Pensacola and Mobile, Alabama, if you're familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a spot that more and more people are starting to discover. Um, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's just blowing up. It's just unbelievable how many visitors come through um, during the summer months here in Gulf Shores. And not just the summer months. We have a lot of snowbirds that come down from the north, and mm-hmm. they like to come uh, stay here when um, when it gets cold up north. And so we have some members that we call our snowbird members who are just <laughs> here several months out of the year. And so it's an interesting dynamic down here at uh, this congregation. But I love it because most people that move here, they didn't grow up here, obviously. And so most of our congregation are people that don't have family in the area. Mm. And so what that does, it creates a unique environment where you begin to rely on members of the church more so than in other places that have, you know, cousins and aunts and, and brothers and sisters in that area. So it's a, it's a very unique uh, dynamic, but um, it's it, I'm loving it. It's it's awesome down here. It really is. You need to come visit. Check it out. Well, that that may happen one of these days. You're not all that far then from uh our good friend, Pastor Carl Gallup, who also understands this worldview. He's over in Milton, Florida, which is just northeast of Pensacola. So uh, maybe God right. is drawing a... Uh, yeah, I want to get together with him at some point. Well, he's, he's a good man and uh, uh, a great friend. He's got a, a really, really interesting book uh, on the way uh, not uh, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, yeah, Pastor Tyler Gilreath, he's the author of the book Gospel Over Gods. You can find out more about the book online, gospelovergods.com. And if you happen to be... In uh, South Alabama, the uh, church's website is Gulf Shores Church of Christ dot org. And uh, Tyler enjoyed the uh, the conversation. And we pray this book gets into the hands of uh, a lot of our listeners. Well, I appreciate you having me on the show, the invitation. And uh, I wish you and Sharon nothing but the best. And I can't look, you know, I, I really can't wait for the new material you guys put out. And uh, it's just always interesting. Uh, you know, it just amazes me the amount of research uh, that you guys put into your material. And so I've only written one book and it. You know, it took everything out of me. <laughs> I'm just not recovering. <laughs> and so um, my hat's off to anyone who is a writer, you know, who just keeps pumping out material. So uh, I wish you and Sharon nothing but the best. Tyler Gilreath, gospelovergods.com. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Check the show notes for the links to Tyler's website for the book and for his church. And straight ahead, YouTube cancels Skywatch TV. 
I'll tell you about that next on A View from the Bunker. Where were you on 1013? As the Middle East erupts in chaos, a devastating wave of terror shocks the nation. Thousands lie dead. An apocalyptic Christian cult is blamed. And suddenly, believers disappear as internment camps spring up almost overnight. Meanwhile, a deadly virus spreads. A desperate country demands answers. And only a few dare ask, what's in the vaccine? FBI Special Agent Joe Eunice follows a trail of evidence to a small town in Iowa and a young boy who received a mysterious email from God. Now, racing against time, Agent Eunice finds himself working side by side with reclusive internet broadcaster Barney Eisen. Together, they discover a disturbing truth at the center of the conspiracy. They wrestle not against flesh and blood. The God Conspiracy, a novel by Derek P. Gilbert. Get it now in paperback and Kindle. From Rose Avenue Fiction. Driving the internet to think. This is A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. You'll find us online, vftb.net. Uh, social media, Twitter, at View from Bunker or at Derek Gilbert. We've also got a Facebook page. You'll find that under View from the Bunker. On Gab and me, where you'll find me at Derek P. Gilbert. And uh, as of now, we're still at uh, YouTube under uh, Derek Gilbert, the account. Maybe don't say that too loud because... Uh, uh, we seem to be attracting some of their attention lately. Uh, if you've followed Skywatch TV for the last six years, you'll notice that a Thursday this past week, all of a sudden, the YouTube channel for Skywatch TV just abs- just disappeared. Blink of an eye, gone. We woke up Thursday morning to uh, emails and messages from friends saying, hey, what happened? Uh, I can't find you on YouTube. And it turned out, well, lo and behold, it's because we're not there anymore. We're not there. We... Uh, got spiked by YouTube because they, uh, I guess, were triggered by the most recent broadcast program on Skywatch TV, which dealt with the documentary by Josh Peck called Silent Cry, The Darker Side of Trafficking. Now, that documentary exposes child sex trafficking and specifically trafficking for the purposes of occult ritual abuse. Why that would trigger YouTube into reviewing our channel and accusing Skywatch TV specifically, and I'm quoting now, of harassment, threats, and cyberbullying, end quote, I have no idea. I don't know what it is about the, because in the program about the documentary, nobody was called out by name. Nobody was called out and, and harassed or threatened. And I would challenge anybody any fair-minded person to go back through the more than 2,000 videos that we've uploaded to the internet over the last six years from Skywatch TV to find a single incident of a threat of public harassment or cyber bullying. And of course, it's bogus. I'd, I'd like to use a harsher term, but I won't. It, it's bogus, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, YouTube is allowing content providers to post videos for free and so they get to set the rules of who gets to play there and what and and how you get to play so they don't like your politics okay you're canceled and that's pretty much what happened or we don't like your theology okay you're canceled they will allow jihadist videos but somehow skywatch tv is dangerous because we're threatening or harassing people. Well, the previous week they had uh, canceled or deleted rather a uh, an episode of Sci Friday, and this was actually a rebroadcast. We've been uh, essentially repurposing older episodes of Sci Friday just to um, continue to put content out there, and especially for our friends down at Morningside PTL Network has been carrying Sci Friday and a number of networks now on their broadcast network. Uh, they've got, uh, they're on a number of cable channels. It's, it's really coast to coast now, PTL network. And, uh, rather than leave them without a program until we get 
the Bible's Greatest Mysteries, the new program Sharon and I are working on. Until we get that out there, we didn't want to leave them with an empty time slot. So anyway, we, re- we repurposed a program from last 